Good afternoon everyone. Carpo here. I decided to make this video as kind of a part two, I guess, to the last one I made. It's a major, an important point that I needed to talk about that I really should have that I didn't cover. So as when we were talking about, um, you know, uh, what is your opinion worth, rather, and during the video I discussed the idea that um, uh, in order to have a valid opinion on something, you have to have a little bit of understanding of the subject. But more, you have to have a wider understanding of all subjects as much as possible. You could be a foremost expert at one thing, say a mathematician, and you're just, that's all you do, but you really don't understand basic communication skills or the needs of other people. Or you could be um, an absolute genius and still not understand the needs of basic people. Um, but one aspect of it that I think is uh, overlooked in the idea of gathering information for our knowledge is what information is worth knowing. Now, everybody has an opinion on uh, what's important. You know, for some people, they want everyone has their own areas of expertise that they're educated in. Whether you be a gamer or a carpenter, um, it, it doesn't matter. Everybody has their own thing. The question becomes, when you're in a discussion with somebody, what is worth knowing that will actually help you in life? Not to win a discussion or to have authority over someone else about a certain subject, but rather to stop for a minute. And when we're studying things in life, to ask ourselves, does knowing this, there are two questions. One, can this ever be proven or disproven? And two, even if it is proven or disproven, is this going to benefit me or the world at all? And uh, those are two wide questions that are overlooked, but... Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example so you can see where I'm coming from. Um, understanding, let's say, how, for me, how herbs work. Um, that's a benefit to me because then I don't make the mistake of taking the wrong thing or having a misunderstanding about which substances may counteract other ones or even potentiate them. So by having an education on this, it helps me, and it helps me in my business and to help others when they have questions. Well, let's say instead of studying herbs, I was studying uh, reptilians. And uh, <clears throat> I listened to David Icke talk about how there are uh, you know, reptilian leaders all around the world and they shapeshift. And uh, that the Queen of England drinks baby blood. Now I believe this is something that he said before. I, I don't know if he still believes this or the details, but it's irrelevant, the details. What, it, what matters is, would it benefit me at all to know whether or not the queen drinks baby blood? Well, a person may say, well, by knowing there are reptilians, you can expose them and you're awakening yourself to what's going on. But I would still step back and say, so to what end? How will this benefit me in my life? Will I ever meet the queen of England? Will I ever meet some of the top bankers in the world? Will I ever see anyone actually shapeshift in front of me? Couldn't, can I stop the, quote, Illuminati from, you know, uh, creating a new world order and FEMA camps and, you know, chemtrails and viruses, all the different things that people are afraid of or at least are considered to be aware of. I ask, what are the resolutions to these things? Has any effort been made to actually change or stop? Now, I'm, of course, there are many people who are fighting for what they think is important. And, uh, when it comes to the world, the reason why I mention things like, you know, the chemtrail conspiracy and reptilians is because people believe that by being aware of these things that they can somehow help awaken others. But even if the world's awake to these things, what does it matter if you can't do anything about it? And if you can do anything about it, you first you have to prove it or disprove it. And many of these situations are kind of like the old God thing, you know? A person wants to prove God exists. Another person wants to prove God doesn't exist. Has there ever been a, an issue where two groups came together and convinced the other group that one was 100% right? Of course not. So everything that we spend our time educating ourselves on, we have to ask, does it benefit us? And does it benefit us long term? Or does it even benefit us at all, or is it just financial gain? For example, understanding how certain marketing aspects work may help a person to gain more money. So, if money is what's important to a person, then I suppose that's helping them out. 
However, the person's trying to learn more about marketing strategies so they can make more money because they think that the money will buy them happiness. Then it comes back to being misinformed about what really buys happiness or what creates happiness, which most people know isn't money. And along those lines, a lot of people would say, hey, you know, it's easy to say money doesn't buy happiness when you, don't, when, when you have some, but when you don't have any, it's all that matters. I understand that. I've lived hand to mouth pretty much my entire life. Uh, and in the times when I have made better money, um, I haven't found myself any happier whatsoever. I just live in a different standard. So, as a whole, and this is something I discussed with, uh, somebody told me about something the other day that happened on the news. Oh, it was a, a train derailment out by my brother's house in Hood River. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I don't watch the news, so I wouldn't keep an eye out. But whenever an important issue happens, somebody always lets me know because it's local it's regional or it's something that impacts me so I'll see it on Facebook, YouTube, or a text message you don't have to watch the news to get the news but the reason why it came out is because it was important because it was relevant to us in our community and uh, and I said you know it's great that people are exposed to these things as soon as something happens now it's out in the world and everybody can see it you know social networking has created a way for people to come together about issues so no longer can we just say well, the world's asleep to what's going on and unaware, and if they were aware, then they'd be... It goes down, down to the old thing, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. Yeah, everybody's heard that quote. Um, I would say, if you're not... Uh, uh, if you haven't got over your anger, then you don't understand <laughs> how to deal with it. And anger's not the problem. Awareness and being concerned about the environment, the world, people, this is all natural. Those are the things like altruism. Regardless of whether it's genetic, learned, spiritual, it doesn't matter. We as humans want to help one another. So, the issues that we find most important, things that may affect other humans, such as abuse, you know, genocide, religious persecution, these are the things we stand up and fight against because we see that it's holding others back. But some of the smaller issues, such as a person wants to believe in reptilians, why is it not a big issue? It's not because people are asleep to it, it's because people just don't give a shit. And the people that do are really wrapped up in it. And I could sit here and try to explain my point of view on it with the primal, you know, mind and the root of these things. And that, you know, the reptilian mind is the primal mind that we just need to get over to move forward. And that we're all humans. But at the same time, I can't say that maybe there aren't alien races that are out there living among us. Maybe there are. But it comes back to the point. What good does it do to think you know? And those are some of the questions I've had to ask myself. I spent a couple decades learning about, you know, what I considered to be, you know, uh, the end of times, you know, that I would live in my lifetime to see the decline of society. And I still believe that we will have some sort of a heavy decline just because of the population, because of how we live, our dependence on technology, our antibiotic resistance, something's got to give. But it doesn't do me any good to know that that may happen. I'd let it all go, say, if something does happen, the only benefit I have of knowing that is if I'm prepared. So if a person's out there talking about how the end's coming, the end's coming, and they haven't done anything to help themselves prepare, then either they don't have true convictions that shit's really coming, or that they just like to live in that intensity. Um, and I've seen it too many times. So I've kind of set aside the idea that, yes, in my lifetime, I'm going to see some shit, okay? And there's still a possibility that maybe not, but I'm pretty sure that there's going to be some heavy stuff coming down the pike in the next couple decades. We've got water wars going on. Water will be like the next oil. It already is. And uh, that, my friends, is enough. That's really all you have to say. You can talk about global warming and shortage of food and all these things, but water is the root of life. And uh, so the idea is not to live in fear. And a lot of folks will say, oh, I don't live in fear, I'm just aware. I say, well, then don't live in awareness. <laughs> if that awareness brings you, separates you from the reality of living right now. Because years down the line, we may look back and say, hey, nothing happened. And I wasted too much time wondering when it would. I was kind of a doom and gloomer a couple decades ago. You know, I was always a positive person, but I said, hey, the reality is we're going to live through some bad times. And I thought that understanding that and being a, quote, prepper would help me, but it didn't. The only thing that helped me was preparing my mind, not for the future, some great future that may happen, but preparing my mind for my own future and creating my own reality as I go, but not getting so wrapped up in new age crap to think that you can 
create and manifest everything that you want. We live within the paradigm of nature. You can try to be more spiritual. You can try to be less spiritual. It doesn't matter to nature what you do. All it matters to is you and your mind, because you are part of that. Your entirety of wh whatever you are is part of that. And ultimately, it comes down to a simple thing like happiness. What will make you the happiest in life without affecting others negatively? And until you make yourself happy, you'll never be able to rub off happiness on other people. I'm sure everyone knows somebody who talks about how to be happy. They, they tell you how great life can be and everything, and, and, and they always seem miserable, and they're broke, and they're unhappy, and poor. Like the person who's selling these, uh, you know, these health products, but they always look uncapped and unhealthy. And it's, uh, this is kind of the, uh, you know, we live in that. We're kind of all a little bit, uh, we're all a little arrogant, all a little ignorant, but we're all very intelligent deep within. And we understand what we really need. And so I, for myself, I can't fool myself anymore. I can lie to myself if I want and say, hey, I'm happy doing this or that, but really I know that it takes more than just having things or believing things to be happy. It takes action, work. And when I'm not working hard enough at something, then that's when I punish myself and say, hey, work harder. And the idea is to learn from that. And when we see other people doing the same thing, they get kind of punished in their own way by society, such as, hey, you're lazy, or hey, you're ignorant, or you're not making any effort. And for some people, they don't have a choice. But for others, they have the full potential to go out and do uh, as much exploring as they could possibly want to. But they choose not to. Maybe they choose to sit and watch TV all day. That's their choice. So, whatever moves you in life, so long as you realize that being aware of things doesn't do any good unless those awarenesses actually assist us. And they're not based on fears or uncertainties. But ultimately, everything in life is uncertainty, so take it for what it is, right? <laughs>